Hallelujah. Glory to the living God. Masi parado sheto zabara de geshen tori dibiri entori andara mazai. Maku si payanto barana zike tere beganto lo bozia. Yana makaya bozi kore bere bari bionta yala la bozai. Yana skodi emara naba shintori dibiri ampayando lo lo bozika. Yena makaya mbaya tu prori ampara neganto lo bozika yanto ya brori enteri yanto ya zuza. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We give you glory. We give you praise. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Grace Muturi, for watching. Thank you for Grace Munge. Thank you, Caro, my dear wife, for watching. Thank you, Pastor Caleb. Thank you, Augustine, for joining in. May God bless you so much as you join in. Uh, kindly stay with me for a few minutes uh, as we delve deep into uh, this wonderful subject that God has given unto us. Thank you, Bonfast Wambua. Thank you, Pastor Grace. Thank you for joining in as we are getting uh, in these few minutes of exposing things that are bedeviling the church and many uh, people are unable to make a decision. Have you heard people say, do not judge? Have you heard people say, how sure are you? Have you heard people say, how do you know that this man is not coming from God? How do you know he's from beneath? How do you know and yet he's preaching? How are you sure that you're not hitting at someone that is called by God? And so the flock uh, seems to be a bit confused and the clergy uh, seems not to give direction that is very clear. And so let me mention a few things concerning this lesson right away. Uh, you know, Jesus Christ, our Lord, spoke uh, very clearly about the, the, the people from beneath. There are people on this planet who have not come from God. Very clear. I want you to understand that. There are things that are walking around in two feet like human beings, uh, with two eyes, with one head. Uh, they look like human beings, but they are not. Uh, thank you, Peter Boro, for joining in. Welcome uh, and kindly stay with us as we delve uh, into this uh, in this short, uh, few minutes. Now, in the book of John, chapter number 8, Jesus had a very lengthy conversation with some children of the devil, men from beneath. He had a very lengthy conversation, and you see their characteristic through this uh, uh, lengthy conversation in John chapter 8. You can follow with your Bible. John chapter number 8 and verse 19. Then said unto him, Where is your father? Jesus answered, He neither know me nor my father. If he had known me, you should have known my father also. You see, that one means that anybody that is trying to argue out whether Jesus is a son of God or not, they are outside the knowledge of the Father. This was spoke Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple. Uh, welcome, Bella Joss. Uh, join us uh, straight away and co let's continue with this lesson. This was Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way. And ye shall seek me, listen, you shall seek me and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. This is not a probability. Jesus is saying where he is going, this category of people cannot come. Whether they seek him or not. Because he said you shall seek me, but you shall not be able to come to where I am. Let's say the Jews, will he kill himself? Because he says, whither I go, he cannot come. And he said unto them, ye are from beneath. Listen carefully. This is Jesus speaking. People up to that point in time thought that all men came from God. And God is not beneath. God is above. But Jesus said it clearly in verse 23 of John 8. And he said unto them, you are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you, 
that he shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, he shall die in your sins. I want us to look at that scripture very carefully because that is where many men of God uh, uh, get confused a little bit. Listen to this. Uh, there is one need to get in this, in this text. Jesus is saying, you are from beneath, I am from above, where I go you cannot come. And he says, that is why I said, you shall die in your sins. Then he says, for if you don't believe, but down there he says, they cannot believe. Why? Because they are not from above. There is no place for his word in them. Therefore, verse 25, then said they unto him, who are you? And Jesus said unto them, even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. In other words, Jesus was saying, I have so many things I know. When I scan these men, they are not human at all. They are not human beings. They come from beneath. They don't come from above. They come from beneath. It's Jesus himself speaking to us. Before I take you to uh, Galatians, and before I take you to Jude, and before I take you to Job chapter 7, I want you to get this from Jesus Christ our Lord, and then we get those few verses, and then we pray. Listen to this carefully. <clears throat> then they understood not that he spoke to them of the Father. They said Jesus unto them, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, Jesus knew these are the guys who are going to crucify him. He's saying, not if you lift me. He's saying, when you lift me up from the ground or from the earth, then you shall know that I am the Son of God. Then shall you know that I am he, and that I do, do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, I speak these things. Jesus is speaking very every step here. <clears throat> and verse 9, he says, And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I do always those things that please, please him. Kindly follow this very closely, because I want to give you the characteristics of the sons of the devil, men from beneath, even some among preachers. And I will be giving you clear names of people that are coming from beneath and they are not coming from above and yet today they are standing deceiving the flock and standing as pastors, prophets, shepherds, apostles and they stand as teachers of the word and you may think they are men from God and men are calling them men of God. But I want to show you how are we supposed to determine if you feed from a diviner, thinking that the diviner is a man of God, you drink poison. You drink poison. Vipers poison. Jesus continues to say, then say Jesus to those Jews which believed in him. That is verse 31. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye know ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free, <clears throat> or shall make you free. They answered him. Listen to the conversation that Jesus has with these guys. They said, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed. Now, they, the reason why they decided to, to, to stay in Israel or to be born in Israel is so that they may be or look like or appear to be the seed of Abraham by the lineage of Abraham. But they are not. They are imposters. They are not true Jews. They are imposters. But they are the ones who are holding the Jewish religion at ransom at that time. They are holding it captivity at that time. They have hijacked it, and they are the ones who are the spokesmen of the Jewish religion, and yet they are not Jews at all. Listen to this carefully, my, uh, my viewer. The Bible says, Jesus continues to speak. He says, they are asking, how can you say we are going to remain free and we have never been in bondage to any man? Jesus answered them, verily, verily, listen, verily, verily, assuredly, I say unto you, whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin, and the servant abideth not in the house forever, 
follow the context. The servant of sin abideth not in the house forever. Because many people have been confused by that scripture, by that verse. They think the servant is a servant in, a, in any house. No, it is a servant. The, the, verse 34, follow me closely. Verse 34 says, Jesus answered them very well and said unto you, Whosoever commits sin is the servant of sin. Okay. All the people who are committing sin are, are, are servants of sin. They are serving sin. They are there serving sin. But in that category, there are two, in that section, all those people in that group, there are two categories in that group. One is servants. The other one is sons. Sons of who? Sons of sin. Servants of who? Servants of sin. And the servants of sin will be delivered one day. That is why Jesus said, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abides forever. So there are men who are, who are sinning today, but they are being, you know, they are being subjected in servitude to be able to serve sin. But there are others who are the trainers of those who should sin because them, they are sons of sin. Themselves, they are an embodiment of sin which cannot be saved. And Jesus continues to say in verse 36 of John 8, 36, If the Son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. So if the Son of God now sets you free from being enslaved by sin, you become free indeed. But he cannot free the son of sin. The son of God cannot set free the son of sin because he abides in the house of sin forever. These are the sons of the devil. They are from beneath. They have not come from God. That is why the power of salvation cannot penetrate into them. Listen, as I answer a few questions that I know you have. Jesus when you say uh, to speak in verse 37, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. In other words, he's saying my word, when I scan you, there is nothing in you that can receive my word. The place of my word is in the it is in the human spirit. And you do not have a human spirit. You have a demon spirit, a devil's spirit incarnate. A spirit has become a human being. And yet we know the devil has a condemnation that he cannot dodge. He cannot be saved. And he has sons who are after a similitude. Jesus continues to speak in Verse 38, I speak that which I have seen with my father, and you do which you have seen with your father. In other words, he say, you have a father. Stop imposing yourself upon Abraham. Abraham is not your father, but you have a father. I do what I see with my father. You do the desires of your father. So you have a father, and I'm going to tell you, your father shortly. Jesus is, is just coming slowly uh, to us, telling them who their father is is we have men and women walking the streets of the world in america in europe in asia in africa they pretend to be men but they are not they pretend to be human but they are from beneath and it is time to expose them some of them are presidents some of them are chairmen of big organizations some of them are, are cscs and uh, and they are secretaries of big nations but they are going to be exposed in this season and they can do absolutely nothing about it because God has given us a mandate that cannot be changed. We are soldiering on with a mandate that cannot be stopped by any government. Not the One World Order, not the New Age Movement. Nothing can stop the mandate that God has given unto us in this dispensation. In this time, Jesus has appeared unto me. And he has given us our dispensation. And we shall move with all power and the working of the Holy Ghost, the manifestation of the power of God, beyond measure. And we shall see the deliverance 
of the men that have been bound in lies by death, by sickness, by disease, by, by diviners, and by other uh, bondage, bondage agents on earth, which doctors are agents of bondage. Diviners, even when they bear the name pastor, they are agents of bondage. They cannot set anybody free because themselves, they are agents of death, of bondage, of slavery, of sin, of wickedness. They kill, steal, they destroy because that is the threefold work of their father, the devil. But I want you to know, men from beneath are going to be exposed. Thank you so much, Prophet Abil. Thank you, Solomon. Thank you, uh, Flora. God bless you for joining in. Uh, I pray, stay with me. Thank you, Nicholas, Pastor, for joining. Let's stay uh, together as we continue uh, with this expose of the men from beneath. Let you know them so that you don't entertain them in your world. Because if a man from beneath comes into your world, then you, you get into bondage that you cannot free yourself before you understand. I want to show you the process through which lions from the kingdom of the devil become human beings. And they begin to walk on this planet. And they pretend to be men. I will show you very clearly the process by which men are brought into the world. Who are not men? People from beneath are brought into the world through a certain process. Before that, let me read you some two, three verses uh, in John 8, which Jesus spoke about these men from beneath. Remember in verse 23, he said, you are from beneath, I am from above. In other words, you come from a totally different place. I come from a totally different place. You have an origin, I have an origin. You have a place where you're coming from, I have a place I'm coming from. You have a process you're coming to being, I have a process I have come into being. And, and, and you cannot be able to mingle with the true Jews. Seller. That's something that you need to sell about. Think about it. Meditate. Look at it with the eyes of the Spirit and let your eyes be open to see them. And you shall understand that we have one child of the devil from beneath. Who I hear is coming into Kenya uh, from South Africa. I want you to know he is from beneath. And I will show you clearly what you should identify and know, especially those men from beneath who are pretending to be preachers today. Because they do a great havoc to the church. The devil cannot work without them because they are his mouthpiece. And if they can pretend properly to look like men of God, and the church be confused, and the clergy fail to speak about it, and yet we are supposed to test every spirit. Does it mean that men and women of God, thank you Bishop Kilo, welcome sir, does it mean that many believers today, they do not understand the kind of spirit that we belong to? And so when you see an alien spirit, you cannot be able to determine clearly, this one is not from us. This one is not from our kingdom. This one is from the devil's kingdom. I'll show you clearly what you should check. Apostle Nesmo, Haron, welcome. Jesus said in verse 40 of John chapter 8, But now you seek to kill me, a man that has told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Abraham didn't seek to kill the people who told him the truth, from God, he actually welcomed them, gave them something to eat, slaughtered for them, baked bread for them, and he entertained them and gave them water. But this one seeks to kill any man that is speaking the truth. You do the deeds of your father. Jesus speaking, verse 41. Then say they unto him, We be not born of fornication, we have one father, even God. These creatures. They take it further. They say we do not belong to Abraham only. They began by saying they are Jews. Then they went ahead to say we are we have one father, Abraham. When Jesus continued, they took it even higher and they said we have one father, even God. The one that you are saying is your father is our father. And yet they want to stone him for calling God his father. 
hypocrites, whitewashed tombs, men from beneath. And today, we have a lot of men from beneath who are trying and camouflaging like men, like human beings. Does the devil create? I will answer you very soon, just in this telecast. Stay with me. I will tell you how they come about. Men, completely men. You look at them. You vote for them. You talk to them. You entertain them in your houses. And yet, they are men from beneath. You will be wiser after watching this message. Jesus has sent me to you. On Friday last week, I had a vision. And in the vision, I saw three pastors, one very young, and he was reaching out to take a paper that had wrapped bread, thinking it is bread. That is what is happening today. People are eating anything that looks like bread, even when it is poisonous. But as in the dream, I told the other pastors, if he's seeking for bread, why don't we give him true bread? Welcome, Patrick. Welcome, Mukami. God bless you. Why don't we give this man the true bread? And I, uh, welcome to Romo. And I went ahead to pray. And I told uh, one man of God, hold this shopping basket with me as I call bread for this young man. And as I closed my eyes to pray, I had a conversation with God that nobody else was hearing. And God reminded me how I used to pray in the very beginning when he began with me. And he reminded me that I never used to pray any prayer before seeing what God is doing. I will join, I will come, I will, I will coin my prayer in accordance with what I have seen my father do. And such kind of prayers, all of them, they don't go unanswered. And I told God, if I see nothing, I will say nothing. And I will not be embarrassed. But if I see something, I will speak it. And I will not be, I don't miss words. I don't miss words. I will speak it as it is. A diviner is trying to come into the nation of Kenya to take it by storm. But you know what? It won't happen. God has already removed the wind from his sails. And not only that, I'll tell you a few diviners that we have in this nation which have a great following and men think they are men of God. But God will expose them. Men like 310, they were not men in the church. I hear some pastors are saying this was just a mistake. No, they are men from beneath. They know what they are doing. A man, like the, like the one calling himself the mightiest prophet of God in the land, he is from beneath. And I will give you some evidence to what I am saying. They are men from beneath. They do not honor Jesus Christ, the one that has saved us. They hate the church with a passion. They hate the prosperity of the church with a passion. They say they are sent by God to rebuke money from the church. Not to rebuke the love of money, but to rebuke money from the church. That is a false doctrine because our God is the God who prospers his children. He doesn't want them beggarly, poor, languishing in poverty somewhere. Poverty does not teach anybody a lesson. It hardens people against God. It makes them very hard against God. They cannot honor God because they don't understand. If you tell them you are going to hell, they tell you I'm already in hell. Which other hell do you want me to go into? I am already living in hell. So, if any man is saying, I'm sent by God to rebuke money from the church, that is a satanic understanding. It is sent by the devil. And that is why a man will say, if you don't call me Lord, don't talk to me. If you don't call me the mightiest prophet of God, that is things that the church is accepting, things that are not supposed to be acceptable in the church today. And I wonder why bishops and great servants of God are not speaking against the heresy. You know, many men of God think, as long as the wolf is not eating me up, it can go and eat the flock. Who sent you? Are you an hiring? Or are you sent by God? If you are sent by God, you will protect your flock against any malice, any malicious uh, doctrine coming. You will be the first one to protect your flock against that malice. 
You'll be the one to protect them against the poison that is coming in the land. And you shall not say they can go anywhere. No. You have to be able to show them the direction, the way that they should take. And God will bless you for that. It may not be popular, but it is a, what we call service to God and not service to men. Welcome, Joshua. Welcome, Caroline. Welcome, Wange. God bless you so much for joining us. Let me uh, finish this text so that I can take you through five minutes of point by point. Welcome, Robert Osoro. God bless you. Stay with us as we conclude this uh, telecast. Now, Jesus is saying this in verse 42. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech? Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Understand what Jesus is saying. These guys cannot understand his speech because they cannot hear the word. So they, they cannot hear. The possibility of them hearing is not there. They are deaf to the word of God because they are hearing broadcast from another center, from another quarter. The children of the kingdom hear the broadcast of heaven. The children from beneath hear the broadcast from beneath and they do the bidding of beneath of their father. Welcome, Jen Dunge. God bless you so much. Why do you not understand my speech? Because, even because you cannot hear my word. And hear what Jesus said in verse 44. You are of your father, the devil, and the last of your father, you will do. He was the murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there, there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his own of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it thereof. Listen carefully. Jesus told these people clearly. Welcome Amoni, Chilion. He told these people clearly that you are from beneath. You are your father the devil. And he told them your father will not abide in the truth because there is no truth in him. Then he goes ahead and says he is a liar and the father of it thereof. What does that mean? If I tell you Peter is the father of John and all that jo Peter gives birth to or bears is a lie, then who is John? John is an embodiment of a lie. As he stands there, he's not there. He's a lie. He's a lie. He's a serpent. He's a lie. That is what made Ananias and Sapphira to die. Because Sapphira and Ananias pretended to be human beings before in the presence of the Holy Spirit. That was the lie. They lied against the Holy Spirit. The lie was not that they didn't sell enough. The, 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 the man that they sold is all that they brought in. No. Listen. They didn't die because they lied that they had uh, brought all the money. No. God is, is, is better than that. You say they lied in the very presence of the anointing of the Holy Spirit was flowing and they lied there. No. That was not enough to kill them. Otherwise, they will appeal against Sarah. Because Sarah, the wife of Abraham, our father, lied right in the presence of God. God in physical form was there. And Sarah said, I didn't love. Did she die? No. That is the same thing that you see Saul being rejected. He was from beneath. He was not from above. He committed sins, yes. But David committed the same and some more grievous sins than Saul. But he was a man from God, from above. And above protected him. It gave him an idea of how to repent, how to change, how to come to God. And when he repented, his repentance was accepted. When Saul repented, his judgment was sealed. He repented, please forgive me. Then he tore the garment of Samuel. He tried to hold and cling unto him. Then the man of God said, the same way you have torn my garment is the same way the kingdom has been torn from your hands. I want you to understand, he was raised to be rejected because he was from beneath. Pharaoh was from beneath. Nebuchadnezzar was from beneath. Judas was from beneath. Ishmael was from beneath. Cain 
was from Benin. Esau was from Benin. God is saying, before Esau and Jacob were born, God is saying, Jacob I love, Esau I hate, before they did anything good or bad. One was from beneath, the other one was from above. All things from beneath are condemned already. Even when they are alive, they are under condemnation. They are condemned totally, never to be changed. Those from above are candidates of salvation. I pray that you not miss your day of visitation so that you may be saved and join the family of God. Listen as I finish. These men from beneath, they do not have the capacity to receive the word of God. Jacinda, Charlie, welcome. Now, listen to this carefully. Does, let's answer a few questions. Are there people who can't get to heaven no matter what and why? Emphatically, yes. Jesus is saying, where I go, you cannot come. And he repeats it so many times. Where was Jesus going? Into heaven. And could they come in any way? No. Why? I'll show you in Jude why they could not go to heaven. Let's go there straight away. In Jude chapter, Jude has only one chapter. Look at verse 4. The Bible says, For there are certain men crept in unawares <clears throat> who are before of old ordained to this condemnation. Men who have been brought in, who have come in, who have crept in unawares. And their condemnation was determined, ordained, planned, set of old. Long ago, it was set. It is their condemnation. Now they are alive, but they cannot dodge it. It is the same condemnation that is set for the devil. They belong to him from beginning to end, from start to end. They are not human, although they are in a human body. They look like human. But I will show you where they have got their human understanding, where they have got their human body, and how. I will show you today in this telecast. Just stay with me for a few minutes. I will show you how they have become men. Who are before of all the day to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You see, they are denying the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are many of them today, you know, they deny the Lord Jesus Christ and they have turned that into, uh, into lasciviousness. I want to show you that not only those ones, why do they come in? You see, they, are, they have crept in, but their condemnation is set. But why are they coming? Why? Let us answer the question of why have they come in? Galatians chapter 2 and verse 4 again. Um, we begin from verse 3. Galatians 2, verse 3 and 4. But neither Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compared to be circumcised, and that because of false brethren and awares brought in, who came in privately to spy out our liberty. The reason now, to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, not that they may enter into that liberty, no. They have come in to spy out the liberty that we have. Welcome, Pastor Ruben. Welcome, Antonio Wino. Welcome and God bless you. They are coming in to spy out the liberty we have in Christ. Not that they may enjoy and be part of that liberty. No. They have come in to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. The reason for their coming is to bind some people. That is why we go out and pray for the deliverance of people because many people enjoyed themselves and allowed spies to spy upon their lives and they, they live like they are not spies. Whether you know it or not, your life is being spied upon day in, day out, daily and every night. They go up in the sky, they look at the stars, they do weather forecast, spiritual weather forecast, they know what is coming into your life next and they stand somewhere, stand by, to steal your star, 
to steal your fortune, to steal what you have already procured from God. Before you procure it from God, they can't take it. But when you ask God, give me a car, give me a house, you know, deliver me from this. When you are prayed, it is released from heaven and in the process, it can be stolen from you. How? I will show you. Jesus one, one day said, everything that God gives to me comes to me. There are other people he gives to and it is hijacked, taken away in between from where it is coming from and delivery. It is taken away. Just the same way. Someone will send you something from uh, through DHL or something else. It gets to your airport and some scrupulous people, they get it and they steal some things in the package. And, and the package that arrives is not the original package. That's why they say, if the seal is broken, don't accept it. Okay? Now, these are men who have come in to spy out the liberties that we have in Christ. But how do they come about? How do they come about? And who creates them? Job chapter 26 and verse number 5. Job 26 and verse number 5. The Bible says, Dead things are formed from under the waters and the inhabitants thereof. Hell is naked before him and destruction has no covering. These things are created formed from beneath. They look like human beings, but they are not human beings. They give birth to children, they eat, they drink, they sleep, but they are not human beings. You'll ask me, how? I will ask you, was Jesus not, a, not God, but he lived like a man? He had a body. He worked. He was a carpenter. He had a career. He cried. He wept. He slept. He got tired. And yet, he was God. A spirit. God is a spirit. And so, you can have a man eating, drinking, talking, having a career, serving, looking like a man, and yet is a demon spirit operating at work, moving that body as though it is his body. Welcome, Pretty Wambua. God bless you as you join us in this conclusion. Now, dead things are formed from beneath. How are they formed from beneath? Let me show you how they come about. Daniel 7. Today I said let me give you the scriptures so that you can be able to interrogate them and you can be able to think and ponder about what God is giving to us in our generation. This message must be understood for we must deal with the creatures from beneath mercilessly with all power and with the anointing that God has given us. If there is a child of God who doesn't have a job, it was stolen from him. If there is a child of God who doesn't have food today, that food is taken away from them. The money is taken away from us, and they steal, they steal it. But when we begin to reclaim our star, call back our resources, call back our money, call back our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our ears, some other things that you thought they were sharp, they are using your head, your mind, your understanding, your heart, and so they seem to be very bright, and yet, they are using what is yours. They will begin to go berserk, mad, because God makes diviners mad. You know, we have some diviners who seem to be so camouflaged, you can't know them. Like one, like the one that we have in, at Rwesambu, a diviner that looks like a pastor, like the one that we have in Waraka. Uh, just before the river there. Like the one, uh, like, like three ten, but three ten, I'll tell you, he, he is not seasoned like the one that used to be at race course. So him, he has a mixture of many things because there is conmanship and there is some bit, but he has come from beneath as the others. But his process is different from some of the others that I'm going to mention to you. Now, listen to this carefully. In Daniel chapter number 7, we see the process through which these creatures from beneath 
become human or they walk around as human beings. The process, dead things are formed from beneath the waters and the, and, and the inhabitants thereof. Hell is naked. That is the way they are being formed is hell and it is naked before God. God sees it and he speaks about it. So seven, Daniel 7 verse 4. We can begin actually from verse 2. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven struck upon the great sea. And four great beasts came up from the sea. These are beasts which are coming out of the sea from beneath, from under the waters. Where dead things are, are formed from under the waters, a creature or four beasts are coming up from under the waters where dead things are formed. And the four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse from one another. Verse 4. The first was like a lion and an eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings were therefore thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the, from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man and as a man and a man's heart was given to it listen carefully to this one these creatures are coming from underneath from beneath from under the waters from the sea they have been formed there but they want to operate on dry land and they don't want to operate in dry land in the game reserves where they might be killed by somebody. So they come up and these creatures come up. The first one was like a lion. It came up from the sea. It had wings like the wings of, a, of an eagle. And uh, that, you know, an eagle is the ruler of the sky. An eagle is not, uh, is not that little creature that takes away chicks. That one, the ego is not Mwewe. <clears throat> an ego is time. It is a big creature. It is a big creature that can carry a child. It can carry a goat and fly with it. It is very energetic. It is so strong than any other flying animal or flying bird. So this thing appears as a lion. A lion is not just any other kind of a creature. It is a king of the jungle. So it is ruling in the sea, ruling in, on dry land, and ruling in the sky. The three end quarters of the kingdom of darkness. The sea, dry land, and the sky. Now, this creature comes from the sea with wings. It looks like a lion. Then the wings are plucked off. If someone is to see it after the wings are plucked off, what will that person see? Not a monster anymore, but you see it, a real lion. But this lion is lifted up from the ground. It is made to stand as a human being on two feet. If you look at it now, you may not understand it properly. But a man's heart is given to it. That is the process through which they are converted from just a creature in the sea underneath and uh, uh, from beneath, from under the waters into a creature that can sit among human beings and, you know, greet human beings. How are you? Good morning. It is a human heart. It is given a human heart from where? The human heart is not the thing that pumps blood. No. We are talking about the human mind, understanding the thing that makes a human being a human being. It is a human heart. So it is given to this creature and he begins to operate and to function as a human being. We have many lions, many beasts, many leopards, many bears, many snakes, serpents, which are today heading nations representing people as heads of states, representing people as parliamentarians, representing 
men and women as governors, representing men and women as World Bank managers and, you know, regional managers and uh, as people who are, who are great uh, stature in the UN and in other human organizations. The world is invaded. They came, they spied out the liberty that we have as human beings and they were seeking to enslave us. And for sure, if today you belong to a nation and the creature that you voted in for is a creature from beneath, and that entire nation is in bondage. Think about it. It is high time that the believer understands that we come from above and we have been sent down here to dominate every area, dominate in the area of spirituality, where which other people call religion, dominate in business or in economy, dominate in political power. Why? Because it is necessary. If America didn't have presidents who understood God, it could not have preached the gospel in the way it has preached all over the world. But now America is backslidden. Listen to me, those who are listening to me from America. America is backslidden. Europe backslid a long time ago and darkness began to come in and Islam is taking root so much in Europe and in America. Uh, of course, don't talk about Asia because Asia has a lot of concentration of creatures from beneath. China has a lot of concentration of children from beneath and uh, Africa and South America is the next stop of the cloud of revival. And we cannot pretend not to understand these things because it will be necessary to understand there is a lot of concentration of the sons of God in this nation of Kenya and in Africa and in South America and the gospel of Jesus Christ shall be received by the black man in a great way wherever you find them in the planet and they are going to receive it and they are going to run with the torch of revival in this end time in a big way and God is going to bless us. Jesus spoke about the false Christ and false prophets in Matthew 24, 24. I have no time to uh, get there right now, but he spoke about them and he said the false prophets in these days they shall be performing miracles signs and wonders deceiving many if it is possible to deceive even the elect. And I look at the pastors in this nation for example I add, there is a diviner uh, from uh, South Africa who is coming by the name Prophet Bushid. He is a diviner. He is from beneath. He is not serving the God of heaven. You can take that to the bank. He is not. He is in a clear indication. He is like, like a symbol of how the devil can, can take one of his own, camouflage it to look like one of us, and fake miracles, fake word of knowledge, fake prophecy, and sit pretty in the seat of a servant of God. And many people be deceived. And Jesus said, the only category of people they cannot deceive is the elect of God. If you are an elect of God in Kenya, hear me clearly. Don't be deceived. Listen to the Holy Spirit properly. Don't fear to judge. Don't fear. Why? Because, listen carefully, don't even fear to judge me. Because as a man of God, I present the word of God. If truly I speak in the spirit of God, that spirit of God, even if you have a contrary opinion from mine, that spirit of God will convict you of what is the truth. So don't fear to judge even what I say now. But I tell you for a fact, Prophet Bushim is not from our kingdom. He is not serving in the spirit of God. He is serving by the spirit of his father. And he is out 
to deceive many, scrutinize many of the miracles that purportedly are performed by this creature from beneath. They are not from the kingdom. I have seen God raise the dead in my life. I know the atmosphere of raising the dead. I know. And I know the atmosphere of someone being put under anesthesia and after a while being made to come back to normal. And then it is presented to the congregation as somebody who was dead and now back to life. Anyone that is being used by these deceivers, you are endangering your life. If you are paid to fake a testimony, you are disqualifying yourself from a real testimony. Unless you are also from beneath. If you are from beneath, continue faking more. But if you belong to God, if you have something in you that tells you that you desire the true salvation, don't be paid to fake any miracle, not by any pastor, not by any prophet, not by anybody, not even by me. Because if you are paid to fake a miracle, you disqualify yourself from receiving a true miracle from God. So, these men are coming from beneath and they are coming out to deceive men and women. Listen. If somebody belongs to the kingdom of, of God and you follow a diviner, the diviner cannot convince you fully that he is speaking from God. There will be some doubts in you. You will be wondering. Everybody is rejoicing. This is a man of God. This is a great man of God. But if you are from God, there will be something in you telling you, be careful. This is not the, the, the right spirit. Thank you, Pastor Purity. Thank you, Ofumwen. Thank you, uh, Ribbon, my brother James from Ruiru. God bless you so much for joining in. If you belong to Jesus, there will be, there will be the Lord God is going to bring out in you something that will tell you, be careful. You don't take steps and rejoice with all the others without being careful. You may believe for a while that this man is from God. But if you are from Jesus himself, the spirit in you will teach you. The anointing that you have received will teach you. All things will lead you into all truth. You not sit and say, no, I, you know, I cannot judge. I might be judging a man of God. I might be judging the wrong man. You know, the, he, he might be being used of God and maybe people are just fighting him. No. Capital, No. He is not from God. Take those words to the bank. Read my lips. Prophet Bushiri is not from the Spirit of God. It's not coming from God. It's not coming from above. It's coming from beneath. If you can be deceived by that, check your salvation again. Check your understanding again. That's why we are the Spirit of discernment. Discernment of what? Discernment of spirits. Because spirits, you cannot analyze them in the lab. You cannot analyze them in a, in a theological school. You cannot analyze a spirit in a Bible seminary. You cannot analyze a spirit by doctrines. We have spirits, we have doctrines of devils, but they don't say the devil is God. Doctrines of devil. Which, which speak like they are using the same Bible. When you find people can only make reference to the God of my father, to the God of Mejawan, to the God, you know, of so and so, and they cannot be able to lead a service talking about God himself. They cannot go directly to God. They are bound. If the God of the one that you call your father is not the true God, then you are subject to that God. And that is why you cannot discern that he is not in the spirit of God. One day pray directly to God and say, God Almighty, pray in the name of Jesus directly. Don't pray under the cover 
or that particular somebody who is telling you, you must pray to my God. That day, the Holy Spirit will speak to you and you shall know that he has deceived you all these many years. I want to pray with you and believe together with you if you have been deceived, God is going to bring you back. Men and women of God, I can see men of you here. I want you to take just one second and believe together with me that the nation of Kenya shall not be deceived by the, the false prophets who are coming in, including the false prophet Bushir. Let's pray together and believe God that the nation will not be deceived and that even the government will not be deceived because what these false prophets do, they, they look for a link with a government official. You remember when Paul went to preach to Sergius Paulus, he found a diviner there, a witch by the name Elimas, and he prevented the government official from receiving salvation until Paul perceived and said, you child of the devil, you shall be, how long will you continue to pervert God's righteous ways? And from this moment, you shall be blind. And the man got blind. And the government official got saved. Pray specifically for the government officials who have an inclination to God, including the deputy president and his wife, men and women in government, some CSEs who are born again. Pray for them so that they are not deceived to endorse someone who is not of the kingdom of God. And I tell you the truth, the probability is very high that they are trying to connect them to some serious government officials. It is our duty as the prophets in this nation to keep the flock from partaking of any poisonous substance coming from outside the nation of Kenya. I know we welcome men, of, men and women of God we welcome men and women of God. Kenya is a nation that welcomes men and women of God from everywhere in the world. I've been in meetings of men of, and women of God from India, which, which blessed us so much. Men of God from America, men of God from Jordan, men of God from uh, China, men of God from Europe, who have blessed us so much. But these particular false prophets, we must stand our ground and make the decree clear so that any child of God that is going astray will go astray because they were children of perdition, but not because we didn't speak out. I want us to pray. Let's believe together and pray in Jesus' mighty name. Father God, I thank you so much for your children, the men and women you are planted in the nation of Kenya. I cover them with the blood of Jesus Christ, men and women all over the world who are listening to the word of God right now and who shall listen later to this recording. I pray that you bless them in the mighty name of Jesus. I release a blessing upon the church in this nation. I, I command, let there be a release of the church in Kenya from the effects of the ones who have come before, the wolves in sheep clothes, effects of diviners who have gone out. Effects of diviners who look like preachers who are everywhere on radio and TV. In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that the nation of Kenya is loose from the, from the spirits which have been released by the people that call themselves the mightiest prophets in the land. The, by, by those who have uh, come and camouflaged as preachers and they have spread the venom all over the nation of Kenya in Roisambu, uh, near, near, near Laksama, and in Mombasa, and in other parts of this nation, in Kisumu, in, 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 in uh, Nakuru, and over the radio waves, and anywhere the venom has gone. Father God, I declare, the blood that cleanses the nation, the blood of Jesus Christ, cleanse our nation, redeem us, O oh God, Save us, our Father, from every divinous doctrine, diviner spirit and understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, deliver the nation of Kenya from the deceiver of Bushiri. In the name of Jesus Christ, I release fire from the Holy Ghost in the air, in the atmosphere of this nation. The 
that many shall stand boldly in the name of Jesus Christ and stand against every diviner that is trying to establish in this nation. Father, you have chosen the nation of Kenya to be the lighthouse of the gospel in the end times. I pray that you shall not allow a lead out us to be established upon this nation. I rebuke all the builders of altars of demons upon this nation. I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. I demolish the power of Freemason in this nation. The power of devil worshipping in this nation of Kenya. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus Christ. I break the power of Mormonism. In this nation, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I release the blood of cleansing upon the minds of people. I declare the light of God upon every mind that is blinded and waiting to be blinded more. I release the light of God in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. We call it done in Jesus' mighty name. And all the people of God said, Amen. God bless you so much. Write to us. Let's know where you are watching from and how you are praying so that the nation may have a godly altar. Don't fear a man of God. They will feel like lynching you. But they better lynch you and you speak the truth. They better condemn you and you speak the truth. You shall be even called a false prophet. They call Jesus, you know, one that is casting demons by Beelzebub, by the power of the greatest of demons. Was he doing it by that? No, but by the finger of God. If they did that to a tree that was still alive, what about a dry tree? But now, we are not dry trees. As he is, so are we in this world. Listen, these diviners whitewashed tombs with human sacrifices and blood in their hands. Your time has come to an end. Your days are numbered. We shall see many diviners die, physical death, in the nation of Kenya. There is a, clean, a cleansing and a purging happening. We shall burn many diviners in the nation of Kenya. And false prophets, if you belong to God and you have been taken away by some false prophets, detach very quickly. Don't follow their route. You don't belong to their spirit. Come back in Jesus' name. I know some people are following them innocently. Come back in Jesus' name. And God is going to bless you. God bless you so much and do you well. I love you so much. Write to me. My name is Apostle Fred Munyao. Write to me. Let God know that you belong to him. Make sure you speak to him. And let him know where you stand. Don't be deceived at all. Let Jesus continue. Thank you, my daughter Pauline Amboy. Thank you, Priscilla, for joining in. Thank you, and God bless you so much. You have just concluded this seleka. I wish you the blessing of God, the favor of God. Anyone that is watching right now, and you are not born again, allow me to pray with you, and that you may receive Jesus Christ. Say together with me, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Save me. Write my name in your book of life. Come in and save me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. God bless you. Father, I declare your blessing upon every one of my viewers who has prayed this prayer. I bless your life. Receive the Holy Ghost. Be healed of any disease that you have been suffering from. If you are sick in your body, you can receive a miracle right away. There are real miracles. Look at me. They are real miracles and they are fake miracles. Moses in Egypt, he drops his staff to become a serpent. The witches of Egypt, they drop theirs and, it, and they become serpents. So now we have serpents, many of them. The serpent of Moses and the serpents of the witches. A miracle of Moses and the miracles of the witches. But the miracle of Moses 
swallowed up the fake miracles. Now, you are sick in your body, cancer, HIV. I've seen Jesus raising the dead, healing the sick, delivering the bound, and you, you are going to be delivered today and healed today. Any sickness, any disease, listen, any preacher who is not moving and who does enough some spiritual credentials, he is operating below par. We believe in miracles completely. So if you are sick in your body, touch where you are, you are ailing. I see somebody whose eyes are swollen and God is going to heal you right now. Your eyes are swollen and Jesus is healing you right now. Even before we begin prayer, I'm already seeing some things that Jesus is doing. There is somebody who has been told there is a hole in your heart. Jesus is healing you. You don't need to go to India for the operation. Jesus is healing, is filling that heart. He's giving actually a brand new heart. Right now, believe together with me. Let's pray. Father God, I release your healing power upon the lives of your people. Please lay your hand in the place where you are hurting and lay the other hand uh, upon your chest and Jesus is going to heal you. Or you can stretch it towards me. Whatever you feel, your faith is going to be released. Do it now. Father, I release your healing virtue upon your children right now in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever they are listening and watching from, I declare, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. I release the healing for your throat. I release the healing for your, your, your lungs that are being healed right now. I destroy that cough in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Prostrate cancer. Heal in Jesus' mighty name. I rebuild lameness in the name of Jesus. You have not been lame, but you, you, you got a disease and you are not able to walk. Walk now. Walk in Jesus' name. Rise up and walk in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, stretch forth your hand. Your hand is healed. Right now, your hand is healed. You are healed in Jesus' mighty name. I command my grace to disappear in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You are being healed right now. Somebody's ankles are being healed. Your feet are going to be strong again. You are going to arise from that wheelchair and Jesus is going to be glorified. Draw away your crutches right now because Jesus is healing you right now. The power is come. The sensation that you are feeling right now is the power of healing of God. Right now, be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Someone who has been suffering so much from stomach pains, you are being delivered from them right now. Right now, you have been healed. Test yourself. You felt something move in your stomach. You are healed. 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 You are healed in Jesus' name. You are delivered completely from that sickness. You are well. Jesus, your Savior, has delivered you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray and believe. Listen carefully. Test yourself. Anything that was you are hailing from is gone. Do something that you couldn't do before. Do something that you couldn't do before. Jesus has healed you now. There is someone whose blood has been cleansed just now. Your blood has been cleansed. You have been cleansed. Two people. One is cleansed from blood cancer. The other one is cleansed from HIV AIDS. You are delivered by Jesus. He is a healer. He, by his stripes, you are healed. He sent his word and healed his people and saved them from, and delivered them from all their destruction. You are delivered. He who forgives all your sins. He heals all your diseases. You are healed in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Check yourself. Write, write to us. Let us know that Jesus has delivered you. You are healed and blessed in Jesus' name. I bless you. Shalom. See you next time. And God favor you. Shalom. Don't be deceived by any man from beneath. And don't give an ear. Paul says, these men who wanted to put us into bondage, we didn't give them an ear. Don't give an ear to any diviner false prophet, man from beneath, including the prophet Bushiri, who is trying to come into the nation. He is already being faced 
with a lot, a lot of trouble where it's coming from. I want to tell you, it is not persecution of the church. He is from beneath and he is purported to be part of the church. Be warned. And God, remember to open your eyes. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. God bless you. Shalom. Favor you. Do you well. See you next time. Write to me. Let me know that you have been watching and Jesus has been blessing you. You are blessed in Jesus' name.